tell you a little bit about myself. So I have worked at Reed uh, for almost exactly a year now. I moved here uh, from Wisconsin. I was a tenure track faculty member in statistics at Bull Tiny School, uh, Ribbon College in Wisconsin. And my wife got a job uh, at Pacific University, so we <coughs> live out in Forest Grove. And next semester, I'm teaching a class at Pacific uh, Social Statistics. So uh, I really enjoy it. Working with students, and faculty, and staff. And so my role actually at Reed, uh, the title is this is a little ridiculous: instructional technologist for quantitative applications. Essentially, I'm just the R guy on campus. Yeah. So I, I help faculty and students and staff use R or do statistics sorts of things. Um, so it's like a statistical consultant kind of role at Reed, and I teach classes when needed um, at Reed as well as my other class. Instructor stats class at Reed class. So uh, that's kind of me. You can also, I read the you can follow me on Twitter, old underscore man underscore Chester. So <laughs> there are no, I, I've never met another Chester, and almost always people will say, like, oh, my grandfather was named Chester. Uh, or, I had a dog named Chester, so whatever. But uh, my name is Chester. Um, uh, so, so old underscore man underscore Chester. Um, and I did tweet the links out to this. And, Try to anytime there's a new package out or something I really like, I'll, I'll tweet that. So, old underscore man underscore test. Um, I also encourage you, uh, so feel free to stop me at any point during this. I want this to sort of be informal. So, um, if you have a question or something has kind of come up, I think there's something has come up, feel free to stop me. I'm happy to um, answer questions. Or if you prefer just to send me kind of a, a note, I have a Google form right there, bit.ly slash. Uh, RMD underscore PDX. And this is a funky thing about this presentation uh, type of thing. These are all actually lowercase, um, not uppercase. So you'll get the wrong, you'll get their message if you try to write the So lowercase. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> these are the packages to install. We'll go through this one a little bit. So I've done a lot of stuff with R. Um, I started learning R in 2007 when I was a graduate student um, at Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. Um, Arizona, and I never ever thought that I would ever teach an introductory statistics to R. No way. Like this, this was a language written by statisticians for statisticians. It was kind of clunky, it was hard to be used to, um, but a ton has changed. And I think R Markdown is really the biggest thing that has changed to help people um, learn R and get used to it. Um, and I actually had no idea what an R Markdown template was 10 months ago. So here I am doing a presentation on creating and building and making your own R markdown templates, and I have no clue what they were. So it's pretty easy to get into them, I think. Uh, and how this kind of came about, uh, Andrew Bray, who's the uh, statistician at Reed, came to me and said, how can we make the senior thesis at Reed, so all students at Reed College do a senior thesis, how can we make that more reproducible? And I really had no idea how to go off that. <laughs> I had no clue. And so I thought about it for a little bit, and then I realized, wait a minute, our markdown. Our markdown, there has to be a way for us to tie our markdown into producing a bunch of different documents together. So I had done like, my thesis dissertation was using LaTeX, right? And copy and paste these figures over. I started using Knitter and Swede just a little bit to emit some R code. But then I saw, wait a minute, uh, if you do question mark PDF underscore document in Word, or in actually, not in Word, in R, that brings you to the R markdown help page for PDF underscore document. If you look through the options there, you see template. And that was the real big thing that I said, wait a minute, template. So actually, R markdown has all these different template files that are kind of sitting in the background. And I'm going to show you today how to kind of maybe a little bit write your own template especially for LaTeX, and then you can even you can template Word documents. You can use CSS files to template an HTML file. I'm going to show you kind of lots of different ways to do this um, as we go forward today. So some preliminaries. So I'm going to not talk about base R, doing kind of everything in our studio here, because uh, it interfaces nicely with our markdown. So our studio, we don't know anything what he does, but it's a powerful user interface. It's available in both a desktop version or on the cloud in the server. So every we 
use the server almost extensively or almost exclusively all the time. Uh, it's a really nice option if you have that. Um, and then with the markdown, you can write your entire report. So you have your commentary, you have your code, you have the output of your code. Um, and even now, I'll show you that you can do cross-references, you can have a bibliography file, you can have all these extra things that you usually have when you're writing a Word document or a LaTeX document. You can do all of that inside of Markdown. Um, yeah. So one big reason why I think we should be doing this is Unfortunately, copy and paste never ever works like this, right? We don't get these awesome rewards. We don't get lots of money or doing things with copy and paste. Copy and paste is super error prone. So um, I'm preaching the choir here, but R really, really helps with this a lot. So you don't have to copy and paste. You don't have to you have to restart your entire analysis. You don't have to do it all over again uh, from beginning to end. You just update one line of code, rewrite all of your analysis, and you get updated results, right? <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a funny segment. Um, so we're not going to go drink just yet, okay? We'll do a few more things here, but this is kind of a nice example of where an R markdown template might be helpful, okay? <clears throat> so there is an app. How many of you have this app? Not very many of you. Okay. So this app is Untapped, and Untapped is an app for rating B. So this is a really easy way for you to collect data on yourself to figure out what types of beer or cider, if you're gluten free, or cider, if you prefer ciders, you can read them on there too. They have needs, even I think. Um, so it's available on iOS, Android, Windows, and it allows you to check into your beer. So this is like Facebook for beer drinkers. <laughs> so you can see what your friends are drinking, how they rated it. You can also see the locations where they're drinking, and you get rewards and all this kind of stuff. So it has a scale. You rate your beer, it's from zero. Uh, no, you can't get it to zero. 0.25 is the lowest, up to 5 by 0.25 increments. It's not a perfect scale, but um, a lot of flexibility there. And for only 5 bucks, so this is not open source entirely, 5 bucks you can become what is called a support. If you're a supporter of Untapped, you can download all of your beer check ins in a CSV. Okay, so I, I took one for the team, and I paid them <laughs> 5 bucks. And I downloaded the CSV and I created an R data package. Um, so it's at Izzy Untapped on my GitHub account, as you can see. Uh, so this is all beers from 2015 to, from February 2015 to June 2016. And I put this picture up here um, because if you look at this, dates are also included in there. So you might think, like, whoa, 15 beers in one day. Like, this guy has problems, but I'm a sucker for flights. So this is out um, at Fort George uh, in Astoria. They have the biggest flight I think I've ever seen. It's like every single thing they have on tap, 14, 15 beers or something all at once. So um, awesome thing. So that's just kind of a little caveat. Okay, so I'm going to try now to switch over to our studio. Uh, this is what I'm going to be demoing. So if you don't have this downloaded yet, um, Install that dev tools. I don't have any of these packages up on CRAN yet. If you want these things, I'll get it there. Uh, but you can use have these dev tools package, install underscore GitHub, get that, and I'm going to show you right inside our markdown or our studio how to create our markdown template. And this our markdown template is built into this easy untapped uh, package. And this is usually how you get to different template files is by creating a package, either you using it yourself or sharing it with others. And they go download the package and then you have this drop down menu and you can access the templates. Okay, so I am going to walk through maybe a little bit later on how to create your very own template package. And maybe for many of you, this is the first time you have ever created an R package. It's only six steps. Uh, there's a nice link that you'll see. Uh, so I'll walk into how to do that. Okay. So let me switch over to Okay, so if you if you have installed that package, then if you go file, new file, our markdown, so we're gonna do this all over just many, many, many times over and over again. File, new file, our markdown. 
Now, once you install a package, so you might be used to just getting OK here. So, but I want an HTML version of my Walmart template, or I want a PDF or a long word. But there's this feature down here from the template. So, yours probably doesn't look quite like mine, but I have a lot of different um, packages that I've created or that I've downloaded that have these kind of templates built in. And those packages don't have to be loaded to appear in that menu. They have to be installed. Installed only. But not loaded. So if you do not need a library command uh, here. You just have to install that package. Okay. Or install it just it up here. Uh, so in the directions I said, uh, go to walk. I think there's also another one that I put in here that's a little bit more basic. But let's just go to walk through. And then you specify kind of what you'd like this the folder to be named. So maybe I'll call this beer. August 2016, and I'm gonna, just going to put this in a folder somewhere. You can put it on the desktop or wherever you like to put it. Okay, so when you do this, you hit OK, and it pops up this RMD file. <clears throat> and then in my RMD PDX folder, I have a folder called Beer August 2016. Now, this is super slick, right? So I didn't say anything about a CSV. Um, but anything that's in this folder when you create it will be popped over in the template. So it's kind of compressed and then it's uncompressed when you hit new. So this is actually the CSV of the beer data. Uh, it is loaded into the package, but if for some reason you want it to just load the CSV or share that with somebody else, then you can do something just like that. So this is what this RMB file looks like. So uh, who has worked with our Mark now before? Okay, so about half. So that's good. So, um, so I just titled this Chester's beer ratings, and there's a ton of cool new features here that you might not be used to. So you've probably seen big underscore width, big underscore height. That just sets the dimensions of the figure. Uh, just, there's these, these are two really cool new features. So um, maybe I'll just get this for you right now and kind of see what this thing looks like. So I created this as, actually, my colleagues that I work with in structural technology, only one of them has a quantitative degree. And so I said, how about this summer, <coughs> French literature and person and the uh, classics person, so she works with the four languages, they had some like text analysis that they wanted to do. So I said, okay, I'm gonna teach them how to learn R. What's a good data set for you to learn R on beer? Okay, so a great data set. So I put together this thing, and this was like for another workshop I had with them. Uh, so this is kind of, uh, you're seeing a little bit here. Maybe I'll open this up in a minute ago. Yeah. Okay, so this, this really gets to show kind of the cool things here. So uh, code underscore download. So right up here, you can just share the HTML file. Oh. Embedded in the HTML file is the actual RMB. So you can just share, just send whoever you're collaborating with the HTML file, and they'll be able to go back and download the RMB file uh, for free. And then you can even show all the other hide all code. So I'll just hide all code, and then you have a file without any code. <coughs> and then show all the code. Wow. Okay, so super cool. So this is like brand new. I think it's a couple months old uh, in our markup. So you might need to update your um, our markup package in time. So. Uh, this just walks through just a very basic kind of analysis, right? It tells them load in this data from this package, or you could use have this read our package read from CSV, uh, view the data, and then do some deep fire stuff. So here I'm looking at um, alcoholic content of beer and uh, give it a plot. Okay, and then I, I asked them, okay, now you try this for a little bit. I walked around the classroom um, and then uh, it's a really easy way to share things. Okay, now another cool feature, remember I said TOC true? Uh, I also said TOC float. Okay, so this is a floating table of contents with clickable kinds of things, and it, as you scroll, it automatically updates where you are. Okay, all this stuff comes for free um, via just YAML stuff at the top. So it's just a page. Yeah, that's right. So this code is not live here. I can't update any of the code here. It is fixed, but if I want to show it, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. I think 
think the notebook, uh, the new feature notebook, will allow you to do some of that. Yeah, I, sort of this yeah. looks exactly like a notebook. Yeah, I think I might have. Yeah, he's got a whole bunch of yeah, so here's the notebook. So you can kind of, you can do the same sort of stuff uh, with a notebook and actually have interactive code like you would with a Jupyter notebook. Uh, so like a, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm departing a little bit from uh, where I was going, but that's okay. Okay, are there any questions about any of this stuff so far? So uh, this is going to be a little bit weird, but um, does anybody know where this is from? Inception. Okay, so I'm talking about templates, kind of via templates. So you go download the templates and then we'll talk about the templates, but that's on a different point. Um, so this, these slides actually were made um, using a reveal.js package, a reveal.js underscore presentation, uh, which is a template. So you could go uh, install that packages, reveal.js. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, if you do that, you go file, new, R markdown, from template, and then you go to reveal.js. Right here is a reveal.js presentation. So you can make your own uh, kind of presentation and embed your own R code in there. So this is actually an HTML file. That's why I was able to kind of share the link with you and you can uh, step through that if you like. So reveal.js, reveal.js presentation. If I get that. <laughs> Just a very basic kind of slash. You know, I have further customized, but uh, it's right there. So, and you can look at the code of this, very similar to what you would see from a usual markdown file. Right? These are headers that creates a new slide uh, with the code. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I want to step through creating your own template package here, and I'll show you. Uh, this is available in two different ways. So uh, this link here sends you to uh, my GitHub.io page where you can follow along step by step with what I'm going to do. Um, and then Andrew Gray and I did a presentation for the Electronic, Com Electronic Conference on Teaching Statistics in May, and they have posted the video of those slides um, as well. So you click on that link and you can watch our presentation. It was kind of about uh, what we've done at Reed with the R Student Server that you talked about in May. Uh, and these templates and how we use that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to switch over here. So So just to, yes. to, to create that page on GitHub, yeah. did you, uh, can you at some point talk about the process that you use, like to do screen captures and put them together with the product? Yeah, so I created, um, it's really just a, a markdown file, so not our markdown. Uh, and if you create a GitHub.io page, it will automatically read the R markdown. Yeah. Uh, produce the code. So um, I just did it on my Mac. I did the control shift with the four, selected my particular window, called that a name of a file, and then inserted that in, inserted that picture via the exclamation point, give it a tag, give it the name of the file, and then I created that file. And then upload the whole shit Yeah, so this is synced with um, yeah, I kind of I have a, a package, or not a package. I have in our markdown, or in our studio, I write these markdown documents and then I sync it via GitHub. And then, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but it's not super bad. So then you just have, you have a GH hyphen pages branch yeah. in GitHub, then it will automatically read those as HTML files. So maybe down the road I'll talk about um, that a little bit more. But it's not near as complicated as I thought it was going to be. It's very elegant. Well, with, the, with the new R Studio, you've got a whole build website yeah, tooling right. in there. 
Right, so that's that will be used when I just show you book down and piece to style. Oh, I think you can also do that same sort of thing. Right? So it can yeah. do what I did, what I described, you can automatically kind of build those pages and stuff for you as yeah. you just upload that directly. I haven't worked that in time. I, I think that that functionality is there. Okay, so let me I'll book down is the best example of that. What's that? Book down is the best yeah, book down is the best example of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Follow along with those things. You want to first check uh, where your working directory is. Okay, so that's a super important uh, kind of thing. So that's my working directory there. Next, you're going to install uh, DevTools. So I'll install that package of DevTools. And then uh, you are going to mount the DevTools create function. Okay, so uh, Hadley put together kind of a nice series of steps create the package, that's going to kind of put a lot of bare bones of what the package needs into a folder for us, and then um, we'll use install at the end to install that package to load it on our computer. Don't you need to give it a name? There. Yeah, so I, I didn't need to give it a name. Let's see. So what should I call it? Anything works. So I will say, yeah, I'll be really generic and say the same thing I said before. Basic. Okay, so if you follow along with the links, I just said, let's create a basic template of a package. Okay, so if I do that, it does some stuff. Okay, so if I go to rich files, uh, let's go back here. You see here's a basic template folder. Okay, inside there is some stuff. Okay, so I'm not going to tweak any of this stuff. It is better practice to uh, go tweak the description file, give the package a name, uh, put yourself in as, as an author, that kind of stuff. Our, our folder is free as well. Okay. So after that, we're going to use uh, we'll copy this code. But there's a specific folder that you need to put that RMD file that you want to access. So the Izzy untapped thing that I had, where I had work walked through, that is actually a file in a folder called skeleton. Okay. And it's a little messy how we have to actually create this directory structure. Yeah. Okay, so we have to have, uh, in addition to the R uh, window there, we're going to have to create an ints folder and then the ints folder. Sorry. Oh, well, that that's just... very appealing to all species. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to create, I'm going to copy this code over. This is what the code is. So, in basic template, we're going to create kind of a recursive uh, sequence of things here. So, inst, that's just an instance of something. Uh, an R markdown template, I'm just going to call it report. I can change that to whatever I wanted. And then slash skeleton. Okay, so, this is going to create directories, um, kind of nested directories. Okay, so now I'm going to go there again. Okay, so this is something I have just started doing quite a bit of file.copy and directory.create. So you don't really ever have to go into Finder anymore. Okay, you can do a lot of stuff just right directly inside of Finder. Obviously, right? Bar is all all problems. Okay. Uh, maybe not all problems, but most problems. Okay, so now I've created this skeleton directory. So if I click on this ints folder. Skeleton. Okay, so I'm going to put that skeleton.rmd file right here. Okay, and I'm going to create just a very basic bare bones uh, kind of template. Create a very basic uh, template file. So if I do file, new, R markdown, and this time I am just going to pick HTML. Okay, we're going to tweak this, uh, but this is going to be what our template is going to look like. So 
By default, it kind of comes with a bare bones template. Let's clear all of this stuff out of here. And let's say this is my analysis. And then I'll say load packages here, create a chunk. Save as. And then put this in that skeleton folder. Okay, and it's super important that this be named skeleton. Okay? It will not read when I do file new R markdown if I name it anything other than skeleton. Okay? So it has to be called skeleton. You can change that name whenever when you actually load in the package and you specify that little spot enter a name, but it has to be skeleton. Okay, there's a skeleton. So the next thing you need to do, if you're following along here, you need to create this template.yaml. I think the first five times I did this, I kept forgetting to create this template.yaml. And then I would go and look for the template, and it wasn't there. So this template.yaml is a way of telling me um, where things kind of are and what to call them. So I'm just going to create a new text file and save it. Where you save this to. So this has to be in the report folder. Template.yaml. I'm going to give it a name. Basic. Okay, and the new line is very important there as well. Okay. So amazingly, at this point right here, we have an R package. Okay, which is one uh, final step that Just need to install this package. Okay, so we're going to do dev tools install. Yep. <laughs> okay, so what did I forget? I forgot the name. Okay, so the basic. Okay, so now it's built this package on our machine and on our machine only. So now if I go file file our markdown from there you should see basic one. Okay, so you have just created your own this is a package, it's very bare bones, it just has a template file in there. And you can create many, many different template files, right? So <clears throat> instead of having templates report, you can have templates monthly analysis, templates whatever. And every single one of those you put in there as long as it has that skeleton folder, the skeleton.rmd template.yaml, you're good to go. You can share that with everything. What, happens, what, happens, if you, what happens if you have more than one kind of template in the same package? More than one kind of template? Yeah. What do you mean? Like articles, for example, has about 10 of them. Yeah, so that's okay. So you have a different folder for each. So instead of having, I would just have templates report, I can have report two. Okay. Or I have report seven. Whatever I want to call that, as long as there are different folders with different template.yamls, with different yeah. skeleton.rmds, and different skeleton folders. Uh, and so remember before where I said um, you had that uh, CSV that came along for the ride? Any file in this skeleton folder will come along for the ride whenever you do um, that file or new R markdown template that you have. So it'll automatically come along for the ride. So you have to be a little bit careful. That's us. Those requirements for skeleton just have nothing to do with basic template. Basic template was just an arbitrary name. So, sorry, what was that? Plus, the basic template was an arbitrary name. Yes, yes. So, sorry, yes. I forgot about doing it. So, was basic, do, I, do we have to call it basic template? No, we don't. So, we can call it whatever uh, we want to call it. Whatever we call it. Yeah, that's right. Whatever we call it um, will be whatever we want the skeleton. So um, yeah, here it's uh, it's called basic template, right? That's the name of the folder. That's also the name of the package, right? So here's basic template. Our garage uh, description automatically uh, pulls in that basic template. 
So call it whatever you want. Uh, it's good to follow usual R and naming conventions um, here as well. But uh, have these package on that and build some kind of stuff for you. So the only thing that is specific about this is inst R markdown templates, and then you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be report. But it has to be skeleton folder. It has to be skeleton on RD. And in that report folder, you have to have template. All of the other stuff is arbitrary. You call it whatever you want. Any other questions on that? Okay. So here is the uh, the epots uh, link that I showed you. Here's the abstract. Uh, here's the video. Should ask you if you can write the link right now. <laughs> RMD, uh, yes. Okay, so uh, you can also use this for distributing files. So I'm probably not, not going to hop into every single one of these examples. Uh, but chemistry at Reed uh, wanted to use R for their introductory labs. And so what I did was I went through and kind of created a lot of uh, so the students that take this don't, aren't necessarily hopping to do a, kind of, a lot of advanced statistical kind of analysis. So they had some really kind of funky plots that they wanted made, but I didn't want them to see introductory students. I didn't want them to see 15 lines of GG plot code that they've never seen a lot of code before. Right? So I created some functions to kind of template that for the chem students. And then each one of their labs, so they have seven labs throughout the semester, each one of their labs has its own kind of template file. The students will go do the exact same thing. They'll go into the RStudio server, file new R markdown, and then they'll pick whatever lab they're working on. And that will pull in a bunch of kind of introductory analysis, some examples, and it'll ask them to actually work through uh, some examples. Uh, and then they'll be able to share that with another instructor if they want. Okay, uh, in addition, there's uh, the Read OI Labs package. So at Read, we use the intro course Open Intro, which is a a statistics textbook. Uh, and in addition to that, we've built a bunch of different labs for students. That are, these, these labs are all in R, so each week they have uh, the same sort of thing, and we did the exact same thing with that. We had kind of the basic template that students use, and then each week they kind of tweak that for whatever their lab assignment was. And if you know somebody that's just at the very bare bones learning about R, I think this is a excellent resource to go through and check to make sure you know how things are, are working. Uh, RMD solution files are there, the HTML files are there, so uh, I think it's a good resource to go and check out. Okay, and it's the exact same thing happens here, right? File, new file, R markdown, then choose from template, and then go find whatever template uh, you've been doing. Okay, uh, yeah, in addition, uh, at Read, the intro course in biology, they use software called Jump. Who knows about Jump? Okay, I like to say it's crawl. And it's a very slow, it's not really jumping, but uh, this is from SAS, so it's a very kind of click down menu sort of thing. Um, not my favorite thing to do much, but uh, what I did was I rewrote their kind of manual using all our markdown. Uh, made it look exactly the same as what their usual um, Microsoft Word document looked like, all in all the time, pretty much formatted to make it look exactly the same as what it usually looks like, uh, but except including our stuff. So you can go check that out too. This may see uh, read templates, is what that looks like. Uh, oh yeah, so this, I'm going to show you an example of this. So almost always the first thing I do uh, when I'm doing an analysis is I load the packages that I will need in that given analysis, right? Or at least have a chunk at the very top of uh, showing those examples. So file from template, and then we do Read templates, so you see there's the RStudio manual. Uh, I'll talk about this read senior thesis in a little bit. Package loader, okay? So whenever I'm doing something, uh, almost always I'm doing the same process and I'm going to package loader. So 
So what this does is it has these cool little things up here at the top that I pretty much put on everything now. And it only has one chunk. And this one chunk lists the packages that I tend to use a lot. So it creates a vector called package, then it checks to see if those packages are installed. If they aren't, it puts it into new.package. And if there are any that are not installed, it goes through and installs them. Okay. And then it loads the ML apply and library of all of those packages. Okay. So I know if I send this to somebody else, they're going to be able to install the packages and be able to re re rerun all the analysis. So this is like a, a safeguard to make sure that we're all on the same page. Yes? What is the included response? Oh, that's Can a good question. Your question. Yes. So, what does the include equals false do? So, include equals false runs the analysis in the R markdown environment, but does not print out any of the R code or the output of that. So, this is a way of like, you don't necessarily want to see this and all of the error messages and all of the messages that come along with reply and all that kind of stuff. So, this will run that chunk, run that chunk of code, but then not necessarily. Will not include it in the actual R. Just yes. Question on the same topic. Do you know how to ask? Do you know how to set? Um, so get rid of that. So it's true by default. So, but then throughout the code itself that you have, selectively do a false, do a not display. No, not use anything like that. Yeah, so um, this is just setting it for that one chunk. So I'm not setting it for equals false for all chunks. Um, but yeah, you're, right. So you're asking uh, how do you specify this option for other chunks? Well, so new chunk right there, right? Uh -huh. If you say uh, 2 plus 2, uh -huh. it will give you the code and it will give you Result. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So we let's say we don't care about the code part. We just want to see the result. Gotcha. So if you do uh, echo equals false, that will not echo the code to your document. So um, I'll show you what this looks like. So probably the three chunks that I use the most are include, echo, and eval. And by default, they're all set to true. Right, so eval evaluates the code. Echo, or eval equals true evaluates the code. Echo equals true echoes the actual code to the file, and include runs the code but doesn't include ah, it. Ah, right. right. So okay. if I do uh, eval equals false here, and run this, you'll just see the code. Okay, so it's kind of the awesome. So echo equals false, it's going to be the results. Right. Okay. So you have to be a little bit careful with this, though. Um, so if I did something like, so I'm gonna, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this result right here. The answer is four. What do you think is actually gonna happen? Just no. And it says, uh, I don't know what ants is, so why did I get that error? Because I set evaluation of the false, right? So it only sees that as code. It doesn't see that as actually something to run. So it will just go through it. So by default, it's true. So you can either specify it as true, uh, or just by default, you want to make it set to be true. Thank you. Sure. Question? Yes. Do, do all the codes different get executed in the same session? So that if, like, if you find variables or functions or something up here, then later snippets can also use those. Yeah, so this. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, so do code snippets, uh, do they talk to each other? Right? The code snippets at the very top uh, also talk throughout the rest of the document. Yes, yeah, so this reads very much like a book. So uh, you can't do something like this. So if I try to do something like this, it says, I don't know what ANTS is because ANTS hasn't been provided yet at that specific point, right? But it does know what ANTS is right here because
because that code preceded it. So yeah, this is a way of taking an R script that you might have run over and over and over again, copy little pieces into R chunks, and then document in between uh, what's actually happening. So it reads exactly like just like running an R script. Any other questions about this? Okay. So in uh, the time remaining, I would like to uh, talk about kind of these two big uh, projects I've been working on. This is kind of what got everything started at the very beginning. Right? So I said, is there a way to have a reproducible uh, R marked out, or a reproducible uh, thesis environment which needs to work in? So last October, this took me way longer than it did this uh, recently, but last October I spent a lot of time creating this template. So this is a R markdown senior thesis template. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like. So same sort of procedure from template. And then we're going to read templates, read senior thesis, and I'll call it thesis. Cool. Okay. Now when I hit Nick here, this is going to take a little bit because it's running through a bunch of different uh, files and combining them doing this sort of thing, but this is going to produce a PDF that is in perfect format for their uh, senior thesis. Okay, so their senior thesis has to look exactly like this. It has to have the right margins, it has to have all that stuff set up. And I, we've completely hijacked all of that in one right? You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. There's a thesis template sitting in the background. All you do is type it marked out. That's all you have to do. Okay. And this has table of contents, all of the things that you would expect uh, from a usual file. Uh, there's the preambles. I think actually, yeah, there's the same usual LaTeX stuff. List of tables gets built by default. Uh, list of figures. Uh, these are all clickable, right? So I can go to a specific graph. Here's the actual code. Okay, so a uh, few students use this. Uh, I actually don't for sure how many do. Between 20 and 30 uh, last semester use this. Uh, and it works great, I think. So uh, there weren't a ton of questions on this, and people really liked it. Uh, most of them are using it. Uh, so I thought, okay, that was cool. That was a PDF uh, version. It had the LaTeX template sitting in the background. I should show you um, what that file actually kind of looked like, or what the template file looked like. So if we go here, this is old. So you see there's like a lot of different files that come in. So the really important file is, one of them is right here. This is a read thesis class file. Ooh. This is automatically just set up from uh, the LaTeX template, so you can specify your own class of LaTeX uh, document. And then, um, so I'm going to show you in the updated version where the template file is actually sitting. Okay, so uh, that is in thesis now, which I just finished yesterday. So this is all to go and test it, but we will see. Okay, so you click thesis, and I'll call this thesis down. Okay, so if we go here now, thesis down, we see a template.tag. Okay, so if I click on that, this is really all of the old LaTeX uh, template that was uh, currently existed, and then I added some stuff. So I added, uh, if anybody that has done stuff with LaTeX knows how friggin' annoying those pictures appearing on like the page before or like right, seven yeah. pages forward. So this is a way to try to help with that a little bit. So I'm forcing pictures as much as possible to appear after their code as close as possible to it. Um, so let me show you, there's kind of specific kinds of things here. So uh, this is how the file, the YAML in the file is interacting with the actual LaTeX document. So here it says a dollar sign title, a dollar sign over here in thesis style. Here's the title. So whenever I specify title there, it knows to put that title as the title. So this is a way of sending things between the R markdown and the LaTeX document itself. So this is the way that I was able to kind of 
put the abstract in a specific spot that they need the abstract to go. This is how I got bibliography to go at the right spot. It was by kind of tweaking and customizing it this time. Okay, so this is something that added, I added the, the near kind of the end of the semester. If they had a secondary advisor, add this alternative advisor. So that's a way of checking. If this thing was activated, produce that otherwise okay. Yeah, the same sort of stuff goes uh, kind of all throughout the document. So if you have something that a template file that you'd like to use with LaTeX, all you have to do is specify that file uh, right here, and then you can set some different functions to call that template.tech file. Remember, in PDF underscore document, it says template. So you just say template equals quote template underscore template. And that tells it, oh, don't use the usual template that's built into uh, our markdown. Use that one instead. Um, where are you talking about? Are you talking about something in the RD file that points to that template? Oh, yeah. So let me show you. Um, I'll show you actually the code on thesis down. So in thesis down, there are, there's a thesis packet, or a thesis file inside here. Let me make this bigger. Oh, so when you create a thesis underscore PDF, which is what I have by default right here, thesis underscore PDF, when you create that, all it does is it goes out to bookdown, it runs bookdown underscore PDF, or PDF underscore book, and then I specify right here that I want that template file that feeds in to be that template. So I did, this thesis style package actually has no R functions kind of built into it, except for wrapping all of the kind of book down stuff and making sure that it's in a nice format and that kind of stuff. So the students don't have to see yeah. all this code, right? Like, I want to reduce the amount of code that students have to work with while still producing awesome documents. If they want to tweak it, they can come talk to me and we can uh, add things to it. But I want to lower the barriers to do useful research. That's why I want Okay, so the big reason why I wanted to create thesis down, and book down is this package that just came out, is so that students, instead of just having a PDF version of their document, they can have an EPUB, they can have a Word document, and they can even have a GIF. So let me show you, uh, this just got finished last night. Um, this, is, this is in the slides too. Thesis down underscore book. And so this, what's that? This is not in the slides. That is not in the slides. Oh, it's maybe at the very, very end. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it certainly is at the very, very end, I think. Uh, so, ismac.github.io slash thesis down underscore book. So, if students are looking for, you know, for work or if they want to go to graduate school and they're asked, you know, show me something that you have done, boom, send them the website. This is a way, I think it's way nicer and easier to work with than sending somebody a PDF file, right? And you still get all of the kind of cool LaTeX stuff, so it has MathJack sitting in the background to run LaTeX commands. Uh, and you can load in different tables, uh, figures, all the same sort of stuff. And remember, there's only one document, there's only one R Markdown file that I'm writing. And I get to specify what type of format I want coming out. Even cooler in here is in the HTML, you can download the other versions of your file too. Those are all built in just like the R markdown code um, was built into that uh, HTML file as well. And so if you compile the other versions, you can just go download them. Right? Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, so let me make sure. Any questions about that? Well, what happens if you want to have multiple chapters? I mean, like book down. Yeah, so uh, right here is where I specify those different chapters. So uh, the preliminary chapters, I number those first, right? So I want those to kind of appear kind of first in the, in the document over here, preliminary content, uh, the abstract, and then I've numbered these in alphabetical order. So as long as these are numbered in alphabetical order, that's the order that it will pass things through to compile the content. 
So this is yeah, this is running hooked out in the background as much as possible. I go back to what? Template.txt. Template.txt. Is that text command, or is that? So this is coming from the Yes, so uh, you're asking where do these dollar signs uh, come from? <clears throat> so these dollar signs tell LaTeX to look over here in the YAML for that particular thing. So here where I specify author, over here, there is the same sort of command for author. So here's in LaTeX it's saying, create the author command, so slash author for LaTeX, and then in that, copy in whatever is sitting here for author. So every time you update this YAML and you rerun that, you are going to get the new name of your uh, in that document. That's your question. So I understand is it the that's called the formatting or a thesis? Um the bar is almost up that's the template.txt? Yes, for the, the LaTeX version, everything is in this template. So you don't really have to touch template.txt, you touch the the R markdown, and then you're not having to deal with the gritty Exactly. So yeah, that's right. So the same flavor to come from which it's Yeah, so we I mean let me show you. So this is a little bit uh, ridiculous here because you have to specify uh, all of those things coming from the, from the YAML to the LaTeX. So this is a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, but it's really just uh, after you've loaded all of these things, right? So the dedication, you want to write a dedication you can here. Okay? And then you have a bibliography file. So you create that using Zotero or whatever you want to do with uh, This is a cool feature too. Uh, Zotero has citation style languages. You just go download the citation style language file, throw it in there, hit the button. Don't have to worry about making sure it's in the APA format or making sure your spacing is all whatever. It automatically takes care of all that stuff for you. Uh, so that's super nice. So uh, let me show you. Yeah, so this is what the actual code looks like. Okay? So this is very similar to the R markdown kind of stuff that we have been doing. Uh, over here, you can see here I've created a table. Adding figures in. So, this is a way of just putting commentary inside the file for people that have written with it to look at this. This won't be displayed in any of the output documents. I think what I'm going to have to do is write a book down explaining the book down. <laughs> so, <instead of> <laughs> commentary, so, this inception thing just happens over and over again in my life. So, um, maybe I'll have to do that too. But yeah, this is all just kind of our code. Right? So, if I want to include a picture, I just do include underscore graphics. Yes, other questions? Well, I'll say the, the comments. Exactly, yeah. So you don't have to type it very, very small. You can hide it in here. Uh, and then, yeah, whatever. If you want to send that to somebody else, they can still see this RMB, right? If they open it up. If they open it up. But they won't see the independent document. They will not see in the HTML, the PDF. They will not see any of this. So this is kind of a, yeah, this is a, it's a lot of HTML commenting, but it kind of got transferred over. Okay. So you guys are the HTML commenting buttons marked down. So which language are we using to make these establishments in this file? Which? So which are you using markdown? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So this is all, I think, so I'm not for sure which style of comment this is. But I think this is an HTML style comment. Right? Yeah. But this also works in this case as being commenting scheme that comments across all of those features. So in the background it seems, oh, this is a comment, I'm going to not put this in PDF, I'm not going to put this in the HTML, I'm not going to put this in the or other word. So this is a commenting thing specific for these R markdown files. Actually a question, I may not be totally tracking here, but in my mind, part of the use of R markdown is that you can actually put the So 
these students don't ever have to open up the schema.txt file. Ever. They never see the lot text. So, yeah, so the question was, do they ever, do the students need to go in and deal with the lot text? No. I mean, this was created just so all they have to do is type their things into this report lot text. So they create their own files. They have the R code here. They never have to look at lot text ever. Only to include the equation. Only to put dollar sign and eight dollar signs. That's all. You know, dollar signs and put the equation in there. That's the only lot type they need. So does that answer your question? I guess I'm wondering why, like, if I want to do something like this, can I do what you did? You did without touching the tag. You created that tag file, right? Yeah. So is there a way to do that in our markdown to like leave everything together? Or is the lot type maybe more common? Is that why you use the tag? Yeah. So the actually the reason why I use lot type. Uh, Reed College has very strict guidelines on what the formatting of their senior thesis has to look like, right? So this is almost a direct duplicate of that law tech template. That's right, yeah, so you couldn't format our markdown to get it to look exactly like how, get the margins to set, all that kind of stuff. You can't do that sort of manipulation on the output file in our markdown intentionally because that will require you to have some sort of code or something like that. Whereas this is only where you're writing the content that you want, and you're outputting that out to other different formats. And each one of those different formats can have their own kind of template files that you can do and do, but you never have to really worry about you know, the student or whoever is doing this sort of stuff. They just live in market. They don't have to do anything with LaTeX. The LaTeX file loads in there. They can see it if they want to, but they don't have to worry. That makes sense. Yeah, thank you for asking for the clarification for that too. Uh, so the same sort of thing will happen. Uh, I don't have the word template completely figured out. That's a huge headache because it's not programming. I have to go in and select the, the style and word, make sure that style is the appropriate format. It will be done sometime. So what happens at Reed also is there are faculty, shocking, some faculty that don't know a lot of time. But it's okay, they like to prefer, they prefer using Word or they like use template journals in Word. And so a student is never going to have to work in Word at all. They just hit the button for Markdown and it sends out perfectly formatted, meeting the guidelines of the thesis template for the library that we and they won't ever have to touch it. Okay, so their advisor can work in Word all they want, but the student doesn't have to. Okay, that's in the works. I don't know why that would work. I mean, you have lots of time, why would you ever go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hands on. Okay. So well, why is are you doing that? Because the faculty want to edit the actual word output? So it is easier for faculty to provide comments and things like that on the word document. Potentially than to try to provide comments. If they don't know any R or any markdown or any law tech, you know, they need to provide feedback to their students, but they might not necessarily want to work on There's things to look familiar. While they're providing feedback. That's right. So my goal is to, for students or for faculty to not even know that the students wrote this or not. Right? Okay. It looks like a perfectly nice word document. Uh, they have no clue. Okay. Um, so I, what time are we supposed to be answering? Uh, latest way. Okay. Okay. So, so who has worked? I think this is the other one. Yeah. So who has worked on parameterized reports? Before? Who has ever seen this sort of thing? Okay. So just a few of you. So I'm going to do a little bonus here uh, and show you an example of this. Okay, so this is not exactly um, templates, but it kind of is. Okay, so uh, I'll share this file with you uh, later on as well. So suppose that we wanted to know how many people were born with a given name in a given year. And then we wanted to generate, uh, from given a list of names and a list of years, all these different reports with potential graphics and stuff like that. Okay. So where that comes from is this params argument in our markup. So you can specify these parameters. So uh, who knows the baby names data set? So this is Happy's data set, right? So uh, it, 
gives you, oh, what is it? The top 1,000 names given to children in the US since 1880. So, a super long time ago. Um, so, I'm just going to nip this and we can kind of see uh, how this changes as we change records. Okay. So, oh yeah, I also, uh, so John told me that there's a cool new package, the needs package. So, I was not expecting to do this, but look at how awesome this is. So, instead of doing installed up packages, going and installing all the packages. I'm running a library function on all of these. What you can do is uh, run, install the needs package at the very beginning, run the library needs one time, and then from then on out, all you have to do is needs and all of the list of packages that you want to install. Okay, so no more installed up packages and uh, library just do needs. Okay. So the so, guy that put that up for the New York Times is basically did it because they wanted to hand off a piece of code to any durable who, regardless of what particular library is looking at the library. Mm. Right, right. So this, uh, yeah, just to hand off and get the exact same results. So it also does this cool thing. It extracts all the packages that were loaded and appends that to your R profile. So if you share that directory with somebody else and they hit the mid button, they're going to get the exact same. So, I have barely played with it at all, but um, it was too awesome to not show. Okay, so remember, we specified Jack right there. So, Jack, 1990. Now, here I say, let's call enter name. So, it creates a list. So, it creates a list of params. Name, params, year. And so, I filtered this data set, maybe names, on Jack and on year. I counted up how many times this year. So in 1990, Jack appeared 1,830. Okay. So we could do Betsy in 1952. And there's, there's Betsy, okay? Betsy in the US in 1950. Okay. So you're doing the same sort of analysis like a quarterly report. text, right? So we determined in 1952 there were 974 babies born in the U.S. and there's a dead son. Okay, and I said, well, what a popular thing. Okay. So that is another kind of hip out statement over here. So it says, the name you entered was not very popular. If it was less than 500. Okay. Or it's greater than 500, it's more popular. So it's a nice kind of Okay, so this won't actually run this exactly. example would be more compelling if it was about beard, by the way. Uh, I should have customized my beard. Uh, so you can't run this actually in our markdown because I'm running render, which runs in our markdown, but you can't run this chunk of code. So what this is going to do is create files. Files with name Hayden underscore 1950, Justin underscore 1950. So just running this chunk of code uh, will do those sorts of things. So let me save this first. Okay, now if I run this chunk. Results folder. There's Doug 1950. There's Doug 1950. Same thing for Amy, Mary, uh, and Justin. Okay, so super cool. To have. You're doing the same analysis over and over again. Just run that parameterized report. <coughs> okay. Uh, so there are tons of useful links here. Uh, document templates. That's from our markdown. Uh, anyway, to create the markdown package. Created a book down book for creating books. So uh, that's a cool way to kind of get used to doing that. Uh, the 
the link you saw before from my GitHub page, uh, creating a basic template. Um, two extra things I'm working on right now. Uh, a book down on getting complete newbies used to working in R or Studio. A lot of work down uh, with, with GIFs. Okay? So you can kind of follow along uh, and see uh, how things are working um, and potential errors and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and you saw before, sorry, this is where the link was to that GIF link. So on the very last slide. So the gizmate.c.gif. Okay, so all of this code is also available on my GitHub page, the code for generating the slides. I always try to share as much as possible, sometimes too much. Uh, anything that I present or give, uh, whenever possible, I'm going to let you have access to it. So that bit.ly link goes directly to there. Uh, if you have feedback, maybe not necessarily now, but uh, you go home and you think, oh, I really should ask this question, okay, send me, send me something in Google Forms or send me an email. Uh, or there's Slack. Or Slack, yeah. And uh, if you don't have any more questions, let's go up here. Questions, okay. I'm happy to answer questions too. Yes? Um, when you were talking about your integration with Word, um, I thought back to major publications and I've got version control is super important. I didn't see any version controlling in here. It was more of a template discussion. Um, how, how are you handling that? Are you coming out with it? Or, oh, yes. or just copy the directory and you know, version number two? How, how are you yeah, so all of my development is on GitHub. Okay. Um, so the unfortunate thing with Word is there is not, like there's the tracking changes that you might usually see in Word, like adding comments, right. doing all that kind of stuff, that is not built in currently. Right? Right. So if I recompile an entire Markdown document, document, sent out to Word, any of those comments are not going to be restored. Yeah. Right? So that functionality, I mean, I'm surprised they even put forward an R Markdown to Word sort of thing. So they're working slowly. I'm adding that sort of thing in, but it's not quite there. Right. Okay. Uh, well, so, go ahead. Um, just going back to earlier, you had just created a template that was just basically an R markdown file. Um, and I was wondering if there was like, ways to uh, add parameters into the game more parameters. So, for example, like the date in there, it seemed like it was like a static date. Is there a way for this? Was it, when you create a new version of this template, Get the current date, um, and also, is there a way to get um, like a, a text box you enter in when you create like uh, something in this template as like a title or something? So, uh, okay, is there a way to customize um, what happens up here to get the current date, and then like text box or inputting things? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, it's like so you create I'm going to build a created template such that when I go like new version or new file of this template, it asks me for a new title and then uh, up against the current date in the YAML that it, the file generates. So I am not aware of anything like that to have a text box for you to input those, those sorts of things, but there's a cool new thing called RStudio add ins where I wonder if you could kind of have that sort of thing. So uh, this is super cool for uh, if you have a dot .biz file and you can't remember what did I call the name of that file, so you can do that, that same sort of thing. And so you can search for whatever you think the name of it was, and then you can just click insert citation. It will not like insert that same sort of thing. So I bet there is some sort of way to create an RStudio add-in to do that sort of thing for you. Um, for the date, you can put R code up in here. So you could have backtick R sys dot date or something like that. Is that the name? It's something like that to actually get the current uh, date. That Yes, when it knits, it runs that R code. Um, so not on the generation of the template. But not on generation of the template, but when it knits uh, from this one. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, a couple things first. Uh, I heard that it's called the app or something like the app words. Sure, yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay, and then my final question. Um, you say a word about Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, so how do we get students that are potentially um, co-diverse or have never really programmed uh, kind of on board with this sort of thing? Don't, yeah, don't. So uh, I don't have a great answer to that. Um, it is difficult. I think um, with this being reproducible and with them not having to deal with all those formatting nightmares, right? Getting the margins all set up, right? Getting all that kind of stuff. I can, if I can tell them, you, know, you just have to write a document. Right here, it's very plain. It has 10 specific things like a header or a list, so there's not a ton of overhead. Um, and so students don't have to write in R. So like, students could do poems and just have these be markdown files instead of R markdown files. And then when they hit hit, it produces the same sort of PDF document for all the links for and all that kind of stuff. But they don't have to code really anything other than they're just typing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So um, since this was done last October, I don't think I, I had a session kind of in January that a few students came to. I'm hoping pretty early on this semester, since this is ready to roll, to go reach out to potential students that are going to run the thesis, do some workshops, have people uh, who know me now, I started last year, um, and I can work with them individually to get started. That's, that's my job. Yeah. You said that this could be done in this markdown, so you do it to add them? Oh, uh, I was saying instead of, uh, so could you do a different um, uh, text editor instead of using a hard time? You can. You're going to run this rmd uh, or r markdown hyphen hyphen render command uh, in your uh, uh, in your terminal. Yeah, so you're going to have to run that in some sort. Yeah, but you can type all of your files, all of your chapters, in your 0, 1, underscore, whatever, um, make that a markdown file, save that somewhere, and then just go over to your terminal and run that render book. It's going to go inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do that. Yeah, so this is, so yeah, using pandoc, that's, this is using pandoc to behind the scenes. So it's doing those steps that you're doing all the time. It's running Pandora to build a cell with it. So far as my students, I plan to do the important requirement of the hard parts break because as soon as they see that it generates a number of PDF, which immediately incentivizes the So I don't think it's really a big problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think, well, I really think that needs to be done. So like, your comment was, that um, them seeing that PDF and them seeing those HTML files is probably a good driving force right there, right? Just showing them how cool this can look. I'm hoping it's the exact same thing, especially with this HTML version. I think that's really slick and really nice for students to be able to like send their results out and say, here, check out this HTML file I produced. Um, here's my entire thesis. But this is what I'm working on. It's really easy. Yeah, without putting any R or any of those So, Jester, are there any issues connected with using the server version of uh, RStudio? No. So, this works exactly the same. So, on, are there any issues with running the server? Uh, it works exactly the same. Actually, it's easier there because what I'll do is I'll go to the server and I'll install this package, the yeah. pieces down package. And then they don't have to do any install of packages or anything like that. They go file, so they log into their RStudio server, they go file a new R markdown book in their case. They get it, and they can put all their files in there, they can do all that kind of stuff. They can send out to GitHub if they want to do that sort of thing in RStudio. So it works exactly the same in the cloud and you know, the And the PDF comes, did they have a unique user directory with their PDFs? Right, exactly. So the PDF will be stored on some computer somewhere with the username, their username, and in that whatever the directory path is that they have. Any other questions? Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks very much.